Hey guys, welcome to episode three of Freedom From Fear. My name is Bob Appleby. I'm the teaching pastor at Colonial Church in St. Augustine, Florida. So glad that you've joined us on our YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna be discussing how we can conquer the giant of fear. Think about it. When you were a kid, you had these fears, didn't you? I know that I did. Uh, kids fear the dark. They fear um, other things. I used to fear that there was a boogeyman living in my closet, you know, and we had all these fears. I don't fear the boogeyman as much anymore, but I've added to that. I've accumulated fears. That's just what life experience does to you. It's normal and it's natural, but it's not normal or natural for them to control us. And that's what we're about right here. We're talking about being delivered from the bondage of fear. We're gonna be looking today at the story of David and Goliath, a teenager and a giant. And so what we're gonna be looking at is how he handled the fear, how he conquered the giant of fear. And so what's what we're gonna be looking at? What are some of the things that we should start with? The first thing is this in Romans chapter eight and verse 31. If God is for us, the Bible says, who can be against us? So right now, let's start by saying this. God is for you. He's not against you. He's not mad at you. He, he's not angry with you. God is on your side. He is for you. Many people believe that they have this condemnation that when they do something wrong, God is mad at them. But can I tell you something? That's the enemy. The enemy is trying to cause you to fear that relationship and it becomes this giant in your life and you feel like God is not for you. But God is not mad at you. God is on your side. God does want to help you. You might be thinking, man, I've been through some junk in my life. I don't even know if God is with me. But can I say something to you today? God is for you. Maybe that's what you hear, need to hear right now, that God is for you. He's on your side. His hand is upon your back. His face shines upon you. God is for you. And when you know that, when you understand that, then you're setting yourself up for the foundation of what you can build upon to conquer the giant of fear within your life. So let's go back to the Old Testament. Let's look at David when he was a teenager. Let's look at the big hairy beast called Goliath. And let's draw some parallels out of that and see what it can do for you and for me today. Now, I would encourage you in 1 Samuel chapter 17 that you read the entire account yourself. We're just going to pick and choose some of these verses for the sake of time. So let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 4. This is in the New Living Translation. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. That's our guy, Goliath, the giant, the nine foot Philistine champion. He was the one that they were afraid of. The Philistines are the people that were trying to conquer Israel. And the way that they did it is the Philistines would get on one hill, the Israelites would get on another hill, and in the valley, they would send their champions out. And whoever would win, the other people would be their slaves. Let's pick it up in the Word of God and see what the Bible says more about that. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. Goliath wore a bronze helmet. His bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor, and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him, carrying a shield. Goliath stood and he shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man, choose one man to come and fight me. Goliath was blaspheming God. He was saying to the children of Israel, your God's not big enough to defeat me. You guys are all afraid. You don't even have enough faith in your God to defeat me. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not a winning God. This is what the giant of fear says to you and says to me. Your God's not big enough. It'll say to you that your God's not gonna be able to heal you or restore your marriage or fix whatever it is in your life. But let's pick this up in 1 Samuel chapter 17 because as faith builds in 
us, we go to the word of God and we see what God says in the answers here. Verse 9, here's the story. Goliath said, if he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, then you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel, therefore the army of God. Send me a man who will fight. What was Israel's response? They were terrified and deeply shaken. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to a place in your life where the news was so bad that your body literally shook? That you became terrified, emotional, afraid. You were gripped with that fear, and fear gripped you. You become paralyzed. That's the weight of fear. Fear does that. Fear, fear marches us into a prison and slams the door and throws away the key. But God wants us to learn from lessons from David and Goliath and how we can be set free from all of that. God's got the key for your release so that you can defeat this big giant of fear. Let me give you a few things. The first thing is this, name your giant. I know that sounds similar to the last time we were together, but it's important for you to understand this. Name your giant. The first step in conquering the giant is just to put a name to it. What are you facing? What are you going through? Let that fear have a name. You know, when things are uncertain, when, when, things, uh, you are, when there's confusion and you don't know what's going on, uh, it's harder to deal with that kind of stuff. But when you can target something, when you can name something, when you can focus on something, it's much easier to defeat. Now let's look at the name of Goliath. David left his things, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verses 22 and 24. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. David heard him shout as he usually did when he was taunting the army of Israel. Goliath was doing this on a daily basis. As soon as the Israelites saw the Goliath, as soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fear. Now, what was the giant's name? His name is Goliath. That name, Goliath, in the Hebrew means this, uncovered. Write that down. We're going to get back to this in just a minute. His name, Goliath, means uncovered. Remember, he's nine feet tall. He taunts the enemy. He blasphemes God. He yells at them. He, he, he tries to get angry at them, and he tries to get them to run. This is what your fear does. This is what my fear does. It yells at us. It shouts at us. It defies God. It blasphemes God. It makes us afraid. This is what it does. And Goliath, up until that time, was coming out every day and doing that. And up until this time, uh, Goliath was undefeated. He never lost a single fight. And so there was good reason to fear him. The Israelites stayed there, but this big, loud, persistent, and seemingly impossible giant was coming at them day in, day out, and I have to ask you this question. Have you ever experienced that? It's bigger than you are. How do you handle something like that? It causes us to question the goodness and the love of Almighty God. That's what the accuser of the brethren wants to do. The accuser, the devil, Satan himself, wants to destroy your relationship with God by causing you to doubt God. Let's be honest about it. What do you think about your life? Where will you be next month, next year? What, what's the biggest issue that you're dealing with right now? What is it? Think about the number of giants that might be in your life. You might have two or three or five. They're not bigger than God, I can promise you that. We fear so many different things. And I don't want to be insincere or shallow in this at all, but I want to make a statement. And please, hope you can understand this. If you could name it, you can tame it. In other words, if you could name it, if you can put a target on it, it gives you something to shoot at, it gives you something to focus on, and it gives you something to get control over by the power of the Word of God. Can I be really bold also and say this to you? That many of us, we have our fears, and we make friends with them, if you will. We cope with them. We allow them. And we've not really gone to God about the fear. We've gone to God about the problem. But we've never gone to God and said, God, let's talk about my 
fear. I want to read to you from the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, and listen to what the Word of God says. Here's truth. Do not be anxious about anything. Doesn't that seem impossible? God would never give us a command. God would never tell us not to do something if he was not going to equip us with the power to not do something. So if God says to you, do not be anxious about anything, that means it's possible for you to not be anxious about anything. It's possible for you to be free from all levels of anxiety, and that's the goal. Let's go on. Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer, everything. In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, the peace that can come only from God, which surpasses all of our understanding, will guard, that word guard there means to be a garrison of soldiers, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So the first thing I want you to do is to name the giant. Put it on a piece of paper, write it down, put it in your phone, whatever it is, name it, take a look, put a name on that giant, and then put that in your notes, and then we'll go to step number two, and that's this, ask God to replace fear with faith. Just simply ask God, God, replace the fear that I have with faith. Help me to trust you. You're asking God, you're seeking God, you're going after God. It's not uh, gonna shrink away. Your fear is never just going to leave because you don't like it. Your, a, fi, a pill will not get rid of your fear. Uh, running away, taking a vacation doesn't get rid of your fear. The fear will always be there. It will always be knocking on your door. That's why you need to arm yourselves so that you can fight the battle of fear, get free from fear, not just for one day, but for the rest of your life. So to conquer the giant in your life, we're going to ask God to replace the fear in your life with faith, because fear and faith cannot coexist. When fear steps in, faith takes a back seat. Fear contaminates faith. Let's continue in the Word of God, and as we read this next portion of Scripture, I want you to notice David's faith grow and watch his fear leave. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. Don't worry about this, Philistine, David told Saul. I will fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by its jaw and I club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it again to this Philistine, who is a pagan, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Listen to his faith, his confession of faith, his faith in God. The history of what God did in David's life was amazing. He rescued me from the lion, he rescued me from the bear, and he'll rescue me from this pagan Philistine as well. Saul, the king, finally consented. All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. <laughs> Saul, who was the king, by the way, who some people think he was over seven feet tall. He was the king. He was the one in charge. He was the general. And he said, the Lord be with you. Now remember, let's get back to Goliath's name. What does it mean? It means uncovered. When Goliath came on the scene, when fear comes on the scene, it uncovers something. When Goliath came on the scene, it uncovered the fear of Saul and of the Israelites. When Goliath came on the scene, it uncovered the faith of David. When fear comes on the scene in your life and in my life, it uncovers what's behind us. And so we have to learn that fear can actually help us get closer to God. Allow it to uncover what that distrust is or what that anxiety is or what that stressor is and allow us to go to God. David had seen God work in the past, as you have, and that means God will work in your present and God will also work in your future. 
God can take care of it. Fear reveals what's on the inside of us. Fear reveals my character. Fear reveals where I trust God the least. We covered that in episode one. But when you face it, you only have two options. When you face your fear, when you name your fear, you only have two options. You can either run like the Israelites did, or you can face it like David did and fight and win. God doesn't want you to be afraid. God doesn't want you to be conquered by the fear that you can name Goliath. He wants to give you faith. He wants to give you the power. He wants to give you the love. He wants to give you the sound mind so that you can overcome faith and push the enemy away. Fear can actually increase your faith if you allow it to pull you to God. Let fear be the initiator of a new revelation, a new season of your faith in God. Look what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. Remember what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7? We walk by faith and not by sight. When you see that fear, it will increase within your life. But when you begin to walk by faith, when you begin to stand on the solid foundation of that God is automatically good in your eyes and you cannot conceive of anything else but God, he is good, he is holy, he is righteous, he is loving, he is forgiving, he is merciful. When you believe that about God and you run towards God, fear will dissipate within your life. It's the evidence of things you cannot see yet. Faith says, I cannot see it, but I believe it. Faith says, I believe it, and therefore I will see it. So have faith in God that he's going to deliver you from fear. Have the hope so that it burns within your heart that God is going to be bigger than any problem you will ever face. Maybe you can't see your way out. Maybe you can't figure your way out. Maybe you can't fight your way out, but God can. And this is the time where we take our faith and we muscle our faith into believing in God by focusing on him. Number one, name the giant. Number two, ask God to replace the fear that you have with faith. God bless you.